Hello, welcome back everyone to season number four of the Virtual Ninja Show. My name is Heike and I will be your host. Today is episode number one and it's a special episode because we are doing a little mini special series within this season for incident response. And I couldn't have asked anyone better to join me for this first episode as Oren. Oren, please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Oren, Oren Saban. I'm from the PM team of Microsoft 365 Defender and specifically dealing with effective investigation. How can we help our users and you guys to investigate and respond better and more efficient in the portal? And that's what we're going to talk about today, how to use the new capabilities of the portal and the new features to harness to your investigation. Right. So this will be more or less um, an episode where we walk you through a few of the capabilities and scenarios. And then we will also have another episode really dealing with a specific playbook when it comes to incident response and another one. And then, of course, many other episodes. But now let's dive into this one, Oren. Um, so I think we start with explaining the... What's the, what's the incident? What are we doing? In general, we have this incident entity, which is this correlation of alerts. But as you see here, we, we look now on the new experience of the attack story. And what's happening in the attack story is you can see all the information you need, or at least most of it, in one place, and you don't have to change your context. What we have in here is we have the list of alerts, which we'll go through in a minute. What has happened in the incident? We can see the graph of all the entities involved in the incident. And today we can see already there's a few devices involved in here and a few users and some other entities. And we can see the details of everything we'd like in the right side panel. So I think, Owen, this is an important point that you make, right? Because there is so much that people can click on and look at. Can we just have a look at what can we click on here? So I know we can probably click on the alerts. We can click on the individual icons in the graph, and then there's a flyout coming and something here coming. So I think it's so rich in information, but not obvious on the, in the first place to understand where should someone click. And then I see little icons, a pin, and I see a, an sure. eye and like so many things. <laughs> so it did quite confusing at first, but uh, we'll go through it and I'm sure everyone will okay. use it right. So the thing I like to do the most having this overwhelming thing is actually this little button here of playing the alerts. If you hit this button, you see right away my screen got clean <laughs> and I can play the attack alert after alert. Now, this is really useful, especially in cases where we have more than a handful of alerts because I can see what have happened chronologically. So we see yes. the first... <laughs> and the connection, right? So, wow, this is awesome. Between the alerts coming and the entities evolving in the graph. So. We can see if we click to few, see the first few alerts. I can see there was a malicious URL that was sent in an email. It was clicked already. That's what we can see. And the next alert, which I can see in here, is already some malicious activity going on on this workstation 6. Well, that's disturbing because we can see already there's something that started over email, probably had gone through the endpoint area. And if we continue playing the alerts, we can see there's some other suspicious sequence of exploration activities and a process was injected with potential malicious code. So bad things are happening on the device. I'm not even diving yet to the technical exact side of the events, but trying to get a glimpse of what have happened here, which is usually the first question of an analyst, what happened? I want to know. Mm -hmm. And then if we continue evolving through this, and we can see there was uh, this is sync attack or suspected this is sync attack. Someone tried to approach from workstation to the domain controller. And if I'll continue, I see probably some other malicious activity going around in my network. And eventually I can go through all the incident and try to build up the story in my head. That's only for the triage and kind of getting understanding of what happened in general before we dive into the little details happening behind. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, and I see that it's like group similar nodes, which is like 
all the things that you see there's multiple you you're not overwhelmed with more bubbles so it's it's grouped together but if you really want to investigate processes or files or something you could expand them okay yeah so so if you would like to level down to the level of the exact entities i can do a few things i can either click here on the files that were on uh, workstation 6 and view the files and from here i can get to data on this specific file so we know here there is lots of data we will get to it uh, later on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the other way i can do it is just by ungrouping similar nodes what it will do it will ungroup these five files and now it will look a bit scarier <laughs> but uh, exploded. Yeah, I can see everything which is involved uh, with the names of the processes and the services and the ip uh, i can see it all here here it's a bit more summarized for me to see what has happened okay if you're a bit overwhelmed <laughs> with what's happening here, which is uh, should be the case for such a big incident, we've added a really cool thing called the Incident Response Playbook or CISOP. What you can do is you can always click here if this exists, it exists for multiple scenarios. You click on opening the playbook and this will give you a guide. Now, what this guide does is in cases where you don't know how to handle such an incident, or you need some guidance for the step-by-step -step, uh, actions you should take, then this guide is for you. You can click on the first step, it's around containment, and then there is gonna be questions guiding you through the investigation, as well as links to documentation for how to do such stuff. So in here, we can see which assets are involved, and if we see endpoint that perform malicious activity, then consider isolating this device, it's uh, probably a good a suggestion in this case, because I can always click here and take an action on the device right from here, isolate the device. If I'm really thinking something bad has happened, that would be a good thing to do. You can always go back to this playbook either from here or just from clicking this question mark and you get back to the playbook we've seen. So, Oren, um, now we had a look at the whole incident, but I think we want to learn a little bit more about the individual alerts. So what are we doing there to learn more? We can open any alerts in here and we will stay in the experience. This is really awesome. For example, here I saw that there was a possible attempt to steal credentials, which is a high severity alert. And I want to know more on this alert. I'll click on it here. And once it loads, I can see the process tree of this alert. So what have happened before and what called the process that eventually fired this alert. And I can see here a really cool insight, which is telling me, is this also a true positive alert? Because there were similar alerts in your environments already happening, same thing, and you classified them in true positive. This can save me a lot of triage time trying to understand, is this something new or is this something we've seen before? And what have we thought about it when we saw it last time? So I can see here already that there were similar alerts. And if I click on them, I'll see the alerts themselves. And I can see how they were resolved. In this case, through alert, same. Um, OK, so that means we are giving insights into what the organization already did in the past. Uh, very similar to this, but this is awesome. This is yeah, really exactly. good because, you know, and then especially if people really use that feature, I think commenting on an alert and uh, classifying and all this, now it, everything comes back together, right? So you basically enrich your own incident experience and make it faster. Yeah. And then I also noticed just a little thing, the graph, everything that is not related to that specific alert is a little bit shadowed. Like it's, I'm stepping out of the way. You're focusing right now on that possible attempt to steal credentials and everything else is a little bit in the back. That's awesome. Learning from the history and the organization and using it to use it again and become smarter over time and more efficient is super important. We know that there's a lot of repetitive attacks and a lot of repetitive threats trying to attack the org. And by learning what have happened in the past and using it again and eventually turning it into automation, we can become much more efficient. If we go back to the, the first question that we'll ask ourselves in such incident is, what is this URL and where did it came from? So if I click here and I can see the email and the URL, everything around the graph, as you said, now highlighted, I want to see the exact URL. 
So by opening the side panel, I can see some of the important information of the URL already. I can see if there were alerts and here there's no alerts because there's not active anymore. We've resolved them already. I can see the domain information, when it was registered, when it was updated, who registered it. And a very interesting part will be the prevalence. So prevalence is super interesting because that tells me, okay, what's the scope of this attack? Is this only one click on your organization or are there 20 or maybe 200? <laughs> and it can give me a really good insight to what is this URL and later on, what is this domain and what should I do with it? Okay. If I want to know a bit more on this uh, URL, I can always open the URL page. And here we came to the URL page and we can see some more information on the URL and it's all aggregated to one place. I got to this page from the incident, but I can always come through search and just search for this URL or through advanced hunting or any other experience which will show the URL. I can see that Microsoft put it as fish, so Microsoft thinks it's malicious. <laughs> and I can see the different observations as we call them the prevalence. If I want to know, okay, the device, we see on the last 30 day, we have one device. I'll go to the devices and I see in the last week, we don't see any devices related or approach this URL. On the 30 days, we see there is actually one. And what's really awesome here is I can change it to six months back in a click. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is super powerful because what I can do now um, is I can go right away to the device first event with this URL. So I can see in this case, there was a browser launch to open this URL and I can click here and view first scene event in device timeline. Just by clicking here, I'm saving lots of time trying to find the initial access into the device. So if we jump to the device together, so we can see here that there is already the event of the device, this device going to this URL. It went through SafeLink, but I can see uh, later on the exact URL that we were just talking about. It, what I will probably do is try to flag this event and continue my investigation from here if I want to understand what have happened on the device after this first click. Yeah, I think, can you talk a little bit about that timeline and that gray thingy? So how is this helpful in an investigation? Because I know, I think you see the alerts that bubble up in red or yellow or orange, like the severity of the alerts, right? But then you flag it and that helps you later to go back to something? Exactly. So what's really useful about this timeline is that it's helping you in an investigation process and you can interact with it using the flags. So if I click on each of those alerts and you see in hovering, I can see what's the status of those alerts. I can jump right away to the alert in the timeline. And same is happening with flags. So what I've just did flagging an event, I've basically saved it for me. So if I go to other page or I want to see all the flag events and later on export them, so I can do it really quickly and I don't have to scroll again through all this timeline. As we know, there's a lot of events in the timeline and going around can be a bit hard finding the exact things you want to see. And the flag is just for you or will this be for everyone analyst who is now going into that incident? So the flag will be across all the analysts looking on this device. Thank you. Awesome. So what we just did is basically we have did something which is really useful in investigation called pivoting. We took the URL from the investigation that we've had on the incident and we've pivoted to a device. And let's try to do it again through another alert and using the new file page that we would just... Before we get there, you would just summarize. So we looked at the incident, but then we had like that... Um, possible possible up, attempt to steal credentials. Then we saw it was through a URL, right? And that's why we ended up going to the URL. How did we make the connection <laughs> to, yeah. from, okay, good. Indeed, we were looking for the initial access to the organization and trying to understand what is this URL, where else it was seen in my org. What's also interesting to see is what good URL would look like in this page. We can see, we talked about prevalence, it was low in this case, we see there is a high prevalence in emails and few devices in here. This can also be a phishing campaign. But what we see in here is that the domain 
okay? The FQDN, fully qualified domain name of GovMicrosoft.com has actually much more devices. Uh, this is a small test tenant, so that's almost mm. all the devices in this org. And I can always go to this domain page and by clicking on this, I'll see everything which is under go.microsoft.com. So it's an aggregation of all those URLs and can give me more and more insights on what am I dealing with now. Wow, okay, it's cool. Another way of pivoting on this URL will be to use the go hunt button. Now, go hunt is really handy. You can jump from the investigation experience here right away to hunting. And it already starts to assembling a little query for you, right? This is the beauty about it. <laughs> exactly. So in this case, we came from show me all devices that uh, spoke <laughs> to that specific web page, right? And then right. in the last 60 days, I think, was the last filter that you had on the previous page. Now you went to go hunt. So the query needs to be something similar or what is the query about? So at first, the query just put the URL and is searching already for you in all the different tables we have which contain such a URL. So this came handy. And then what I wanted to do is to play a bit with this query and see if some part of the URL came up in other devices. So for example, in here, I changed the query and I removed the first subdomain. What's left is mm -hmm. only the domain and the top level domain. And now if we look on this, for example, we look on some of the results we'll get, so we can see there's actually many more events involving this URL or this domain. And if I try to see on which devices here, so I can see where it's workstation six, which we've already looked at, but now I see workstation eight, which is another device which was not correlated yet to the incident. Okay, because it was talking to a different sub, like not to this specific domain, but a subdomain or the top level domain. Okay. True. So I suspect here there might be a connection based only on the domain, not the subdomain. It can be a completely different attack, but maybe the same attacker sitting behind. It. What mm -hmm. I can do, which is really useful, is I can pick some of the events I think are related on this workstation eight and use link to incident. What this will do is will basically launch again connection generate alert and connect it all together into the incident. So this way we've combined the power of the analysts, the people and the system, the smartness of the system all together. And we get incidents which are more rich and more powerful. Okay. So in this case, you just picked some random items to show how that works, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. So once we've done that, we can go back to the incident we can see what happened later on this attack. So if I scroll through the alerts again here, I want to see what have happened to workstation six. So there was some sequence of exploration activities and a process injected with potentially malicious code. <laughs> That's really bad. And eventually I land here on possible attempt to steal credentials. Now, this is the part more worrying because if it used to be the case that only workstation six was compromised, Now we think of worst <laughs> situation where there's going to be other devices in the org compromised. So we can see again this uh, process tree. And if I'll scroll back uh, down here, I can see all the alerts on this device that are related to the same process tree. So I don't have to jump back and forth between alerts, but I can see it's all summarized. And we can see here the interesting part of PowerShell executed the script. Well, that's disturbing. And if I open that, I can see that there was trying to invoke Mimikatz. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's never good. <laughs> it's never good, that's for sure. And what we can do now is try and look on Mimikatz file and learn more on this file and where was it seen in our organization. So this now shows you the whole content of the script that was executed on the right side pane. Yeah. So, so this is uh, indeed pretty technical. It's exactly the script that was executed, but what it means, it means there's already Mimikatz in the environment, right? It's not that it only was created today and now it was just launched. And 
we will want to find these mimicats in the environment. And it's part of this incident, but we can jump right away to the file page. So this is the new file page. Uh, got new design and lots of new capabilities. So as we saw before, this is Mimikatz. It's indeed unsigned and I can see the size uh, right away from here. We have all the information we used to have in the page of the metadata on the file, but there is a new part here, which is super interesting called file capabilities. Oh, wow. I was wondering where this is coming from. This is awesome. Yes, show me. <laughs> cool. So, File capabilities will show you what the file is capable of doing. So even if the file was there and didn't do anything bad yet, you will be able to know what it's capable of doing. We can either click here and see all the different capabilities colored into the attack technique by MITRE. You can you have links here to MITRE if you want to learn more and what is this technique. And we can see what's the reason that we think this file is capable of doing such thing. And we can see that through here and also through the file content tab, which we will go to in a minute. The other thing we can see in here is the, again, the device prevalence. And uh, like we've seen before, for 30 days, we can see the first event in the last 30 days with this file on and the device and the last event. And in this case, we don't have observation on cloud apps, but that's really awesome. We can pivot from here to cloud apps that had this file on them. So if you have this file on a OneDrive and Defender for Cloud Apps detected it, it will pop up here as well, and we can do this pivot the same way. So this, it says three devices, but I only see two. Those are the first and last devices in here. And if we want to see all the devices, we can view all devices. Ah, OK. Thank you very much. In the last <laughs> it's week, like, that's, yeah. that's not right. <laughs> in the last week, there were no devices, uh, which is good because <laughs> there was no many cuts on devices. In the last 30 days, we can see those three devices. And again, if I take back for six months, so I can see there's actually a fourth device, uh, Lovelace, <laughs> which I can see pretty interesting stuff on top of these devices. First of all, we can see that the file was executed in all. So it helps me a lot in the cases of there is malware in the environment and I can tell, okay, this is important to deal with now because it was executing already. And here it was not executed. I'll deal with it, but in a minute. The other thing I can see is what was the file called on the device and the first event information. Here it's all the file created and who created this file and when. I can see what was the last action of this file on the device. So what was it looking like and some other information on the device itself. And again, like we've seen before, I can pivot right away to the first event in the device timeline. And this will put me right here, exactly where Explorer created the file. And I can understand more and save lots of time scrolling around in the device page. Wow, OK. And this was the first machine where we saw that file showing up in the last one, the six months. Exactly. This is super interesting because this way we can understand Sometimes we see something that have happened just now, but actually the initial access was a few months back. And this is how we can find it real quick. I would assume there was an alert six months back when Mimikat showed up, but someone has ignored it. Yeah, true. <laughs> and that can be. It happens a lot. And, or sometimes the device was not onboarded or not configured. And yep. Yeah. So I think um, the last piece, Oren, that you wanted to talk about is, again, related a little bit to files. What else do we have there that's new? So if we hop back to the Mimikat page, we can see there is a new file content tab. Now, this will be shown only if the file was seen in your organization. So don't be scared if it's not there. <laughs> but when it's there, we can see multiple interesting stuff. So one of them is this file capabilities we were talking about before. And the other is much more detonation information that is coming out of the box and pre-populated. You don't have to detonate it by yourself or collect the file and detonate it. You can see some of the stuff already by what we've got from dynamic and static detonation. In this case, we've got imports and a lot of them. And using these imports is how we created those five capabilities. But you can always get to the raw event and raw data and basically search over those and try to find more and more information on this file. 
in Mimikatz, it's pretty easy because we all know this malware, but when it's going to be files which are more unusual and distinct, <laughs> so you mm -hmm. it will come much more handy. Wow. So, and then um, you could download that file, right? If there's still an endpoint that has that file on it, the file names is interesting, same file, but saw like multiple names. I think it's, it's a great overview for someone to quickly understand a specific file in an organization. So what did we do, Oren? We looked so at the incident. We looked at the story, um, the attack story, um, helping us easily to understand how that attack evolved over time and where it went from A to B. And then you picked a couple of items to now investigate um, that specific attempt for um, stealing credentials. You looked at a specific URL because it was a phishing URL. Yep. So how would you suggest someone to continue investigating? I know you showed that playbook and how can we get to that playbook when we go back to that incident? What we've done is we've basically gone through some small part of this attack. This is a pretty complex attack and try to understand the involved entities where they're at in the portal and pivot on top of them. And what I would recommend for the analyst to continue on doing is trying to take what you got here as an incident It's usually complete and has a lot of information and collect all the pieces of those entities using all the information we bring up here. So there's information such as the, the virus total rate, like how much, how bad is this file or the prevalence we've talked about and using those pivoting capabilities to build up the story for what happened in the incident is really important trying to cover up all everything that happened in terms of the incident and eventually build up the summary and the story of what happened. Mm. And I would assume that it depends on the incident if you would start taking actions right away, like, I don't know, disable the user, send a password reset, isolate machine, do, I don't know, specific things depending on the incident, right? 100%. In this case, we can see that if I click on the device details, we will see there is hear a message saying that device isolation action was already taken by me. Okay. <laughs> and uh, basically we've isolated both of those devices because like we've seen before, there was a malicious activity happening on this device and it was pretty clear this is true. But yeah, it depends on when it's less clear that something bad have happened, I will probably do much more investigation and then take the action. But in those cases, I will isolate and contain the attack real quick and after that do the full investigation to understand more. Yeah. And I would suggest everyone who might be still new to all the functions and buttons um, to really go to the individual entity pages and see what kind of actions can be taken. So if you need them, you know what can be done. <laughs> Oren, um, thank you so much. Thank you, first of all, for bringing this topic into the show and uh, suggesting us to do a little bit more real incident investigation um, and response for our audience. Yeah, and for driving all these efforts of making the, the investigation experience better and easier for our customers. And of course, thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.